what have been some of your favorite or most memorable parts of this tour so far anything that sticks out ah oh, it's been an amazing tour i was actually in the hotel this earlier on going like last weekend i was really sick i had the flu i had uh and like respiratory infection and i was just like had to pl i played like 14 hours 13 hours last weekend like over two gigs and i was dying i was like literally the, after the last show in dallas i could i couldn't even stand up throughout the whole of the set i had to sit down halfway through um but it's just been one of those sets that one of those sh tours that it's just been so fun and like don't get me wrong there's they are long nights if you know what i mean they're lo they're really long days you're traveling for three to five hours three to six hours during the day on a plane you get to the city eat dinner go straight to the club pretty much um and then you do the same thing again and then when you have three shows or four shows on a weekend it turns into a long weekend but it's 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 all been really good really good shows for me chicago is always amazing spy bar is just crazy um, New York, I played, I've never headlined a show in New York in my whole career, which is kind of weird, like, I'm not too sure why we haven't, but I did my first headline show in New York, and it was in a place called Good Room, which is a proper, it's like one of the last proper clubs in, that I've been to in America, it's just a very dark room, um, it sounds great, it's kind of a do-it-yourself club, it's not like fancy there's no real bottle service there's nothing it's just like a really raw like hexagon kind of club um that was amazing it was really really good and like i was kind of worried about if anyone would turn up if you know what i mean because i'd never done a headline show there i'd never yeah. done like a solo show in new york and people turned up which was amazing and then la was the first weekend of the, of the tour la san francisco san francisco was amazing but la we we sold out exchange and it was just like it was just one of those nights where it just felt so good but honestly this whole tour has been really good we've had one iffy show and that was in boston and i'll be honest i we knew that was going to be an iffy show yeah. um yeah but it was it's been good so far so the first time I saw you was actually in Orlando, which is a funny coincidence, yeah. you know. Uh, and you opened for Rabbit in the Moon. And oh, it, damn. That was it. Uh, yeah. The Blues. What was... Um, House of Blues. House of Blues. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, ah, like, in, like instant I knew that it was going somewhere. So you, um, your fan base has grown tremendously since then, I would say, here. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I would say so. So congratulations. Thank you. On all of that. So, how does your your new ventures? How does that uh, affect the the Dirty Bird situation, or what um, what's going on with that? Or um, it doesn't affect anything. It's just um, more about managing. It's not really like Dirty Bird. They're all my homies. If you know what I mean, everyone's my homies. Um, Claude is happy that I've got a new record label. If you know what I mean? It's like everyone supports everyone. Um, Justin's a very close friend of mine. Sheba is one of my best friends. Kill Frenzy is a very close friend. Walker and Royce, they're all, like, all of them are, are like some of my closest friends in the industry. Um, I just need to do me, if that makes sense. And that doesn't mean that I will never release on Dirty Bird again or never do a Dirty Bird party again. It's not, that's not ever, that's like, I would never say that um, but at this moment in time I just need to concentrate on what I'm doing and kind of grow what I want to build for the future and for other people as well for other artists yeah what are your Miami Music Week plans aren't you there for a date I believe yeah so I'm playing the Pete Tong pool party okay I'm playing back to back with Cita Rebellion um, and then I have my own All We Have Is Now party which uh, is at the Glenmore Hotel um, we have Huxley, Chris Stussy, and Daddy Dino on. Chris is a Dutch DJ. Huxley, obviously from the UK. Daddy Dino is New York DJ um, who mostly lives in the UK. Um, and then I'm playing 
uh, Chris Lake pool party, but I'm not too sure if we're allowed to announce that yet. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> that was a little bit of a secret yeah. I didn't know about. Um, okay. And I'm also playing another interesting party, but I don't think we're allowed to announce it yet. Okay, okay. All right, so... So we went over the label and we went over the new songs and Miami Music Week. Uh, is there are there any other big things going on that we should let people know about? Or uh, are you still doing the T-shirts or anything like that? I know you had that like at the beginning of the tour. Yeah, there's still a few tour T-shirts left. Um, you can just grab that. Just Google Will Clark tour T-shirts. But there there's still a few left, not many. Yeah. So if you came to the tour. Um, it would be great because we're never going to print those ever again. <laughs> um, yeah, there's nothing really else. I guess just it would be amazing if everyone could go check the music out and keep an eye on the label, really. And then I had one last question just out of curiosity. Has anyone ever asked, has anyone ever offered money for you to cut your beard? Or is <laughs> there like a, is there like a, a threshold that, that you would cross in order to do it? Or I don't know, a charity that you would do it So for? I actually start, the reason why I started growing a beard was for charity. Okay. So my parents, they own a drug and alcohol rehab in okay. uh, the UK. And they also run a mental health charity in the UK. Um, and I was going to grow a beard and then cut it off after a year to raise money for the charity. However, during that year was when I became successful in music. So all of my press shots were with a beard. No one knew me before with a beard. So, like, I had to keep the beard. Um, so, no, there is no amount of money. Maybe if somebody's willing to pay me a million dollars, then I would pretty much take that. But no, this, the beard is staying. So the beard literally grew on you. Like the you're... beard is like literally... <laughs> I think the beard is one of the reasons why people recognize who I am. Yeah. 100%. It's the lucky beard. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think it's just people can... I don't know. It is I, almost a branding thing. Yeah, it is, 100%. Yeah. And yeah. I'm all about branding, 100 It's not like... I don't really like the word branding, but it is... Yeah. 100% all about the brand and people can recognize you walking down the street yeah. people can recognize you behind the decks it doesn't necessarily mean you're better or anything like that but being recognizable is always helpful yeah um, okay and then uh, maybe maybe one more question <coughs> okay so you mentioned the flu having the flu and yeah. having to play through that which um, which is definitely something to uh, to overcome. But how do you deal like rapidly thinking about technical issues? And do you do you have that kind of stuff, or um, when you're on the road, or do you, you know? What whilst DJing? Yeah, like have you ever had anything yeah, like that? Yeah, you happen? always have stuff, but like all the time. But I think it's just a, I've been playing since I was nine years old, oh. so it's kind of you just get used to it. Yeah, um, it's just like anything in life you know what I mean like if something happens you fix it and nothing ever worries me like that that's a good that's good advice good advice well you just never know like and a lot of the time it's out of your power and a lot of the time it's you just being an absolute idiot and press the wrong button <laughs> <laughs> so as long as you can like hold your hands up and be like I fucked up I'm sorry we're all fucking human no one's perfect out here wonderful all right well thank you dj will clark we are at celine orlando so be checking out for our photos and our coverage of that on floridamusicblog.com and our instagram at florida music blog and you your instagram is at dj DJ will clark Clark. all right thank you so much and we look forward to checking out the show thanks having me